paint like a sculptor. All right, I shall. I heard somebody make a noise. Feel free. Anthony, with uh, studying and that, um, like, with if you have like a day off or something like that, what do you reckon is a good amount of time to get into that day? About seven hours or so. Um, <clears throat> I think you should study every day. This is, mm -hmm. this is like. Um, a common question of like how often or when should I do it? Mm -hmm. uh, let me drink some water. I'll explain further. Water. Um, yeah, you should study as often as you can. And <clears throat> especially when you're first starting out. And the, the, the thinking behind this that usually turns people off is that well like you know i gotta like do work too i gotta build a portfolio and do all this stuff mm -hmm. and the premise is that well you don't know how to to do anything right yeah like that's, yep. that's kind of the problem right? you don't know how to paint well or you don't know how to do perspective or you don't understand your forms and so this is why you have to you, you have to practice you know of course yep and so so how do we go about practicing then with that in mind well the way that i usually approach it is i i think about like i think about the the problem at hand like if i'm having a problem with values then i practice it with values if i'm having pro a problem with form then i practice form if i'm having a problem with uh perspective you get it like i just yep. focus i just focus in on the very things that i'm having trouble with <laughs> Um, <clears throat> more than anything else. And, and I see like a lot of times people will, like you, you've mentioned, uh, Dave Raposo at one point. Yeah. Yeah. Last class. So he, he's a great example of what I would say not to do. Um, right. Yeah. Because what I've seen him do is he'll just like study, like he'll just make a regiment of like things to study. And I like, I'm going to study this, like kind of like a, an exercise, like a, like a diet plan. Yep. And for me, that works, but it's not nearly as effective as poignant focused studies. So you should study everything that he has studied and everything he talked about studying, but you should do it based as a reaction to what you want to learn versus I just got to eat my veggies, you know, because if you, if you do it the way that I'm suggesting, then you will retain that information longer because there's more meaning to it. Uh, a good example of this would be like, like I'm sure you went to grade school and they taught you a lot about history and, and math and all that stuff. And I'm sure if I were to ask you any of these kinds, like the Pythagorean theorem, like could you tell me what the Pythagorean theorem is? I'm not sure if they taught us that. <laughs> I'm sure they did. Did you, did you take geometry? Uh, no, I don't think I ever did geometry. Oh, I remember. Okay. Well, then maybe not. Then. It, but, yeah. Yeah, but the the principal point of what I'm saying is that like that was something that would be taught, right? And yeah. they taught you guys are not. You know, I don't know. I'm not going to get into that. My point is, is that um, like I don't know. Like if I were to ask you what happened in 1860 in Australia, like would you know? like a meaningful thing and most likely you wouldn't unless you're a historian buff or maybe there's a very specific event in australia that everybody knows right right yeah but like you get my point like there's there's this kind of like the subtle knowledge that just kind of slips through the cracks right of course <clears throat> and so that's what happens when you do the same thing with like painting by or studying by the numbers right you're just focusing on these different principles rather than having a real strategy you know? Right. Yeah. So, so the way that I was practicing was like the opposite of this, where like uh, I would be like trying to paint a character. Like, for instance, right now, I'm like trying to get better at painterly illustrative type artwork. So, I've just been looking at painterly illustrative. Like, that's all I look at. I don't look at anything else, you know? Yep. Until I start to feel more in tune with it. And I used to paint like this 
in the past, but I can tell that I need to start doing it more and more. Um, just because it is a fun way to paint and it does add a lot more uh, volume to my paintings that I miss. Because uh, I've been focused so much on speed these days, I need to get back to just getting better as a painter. And so, so I studied these very things. Um, one thing that I realized is I need to be better at poses. So I study poses, right? Like I I've started collecting artwork to start studying. I'm probably gonna go to a comic book store maybe, start getting some comics, look at how some comic book illustrators do it. You know, like these are the kinds of things. Like I got inspired by animation and I'm just thinking like, there's a lot there. I should probably, you know, get better at this type of stuff. Yeah. You no. Know? Uh, when I was learning programming, I would focus on on very specific programming paradigms and see if I understood them. You know? This, yeah. This is, the, this is the way that I think is the best way to study is to just do it that way. Is where you you pick a, a a specific problem. So in your in your case, you might be needing to work on form and lighting. Right. You should do that every day. You should do a little bit of that every day um so that way uh when you go to practice or well, sorry when you go to actually try to do it you will feel a little bit more wiser and then you'll run into new questions you might have about it mm -hmm. you know? and then you'll when you do the study the next day or in the next hour whenever you plan to do a study again you'll you'll have something to study right yeah you know? you'll have a little bit more focus on like what to try to get right you know yeah yeah and then that way i'll know that i'm improving like with what i need to improve on yeah because if you look at something else to use another example like you probably know basic math right like like if i were to ask you four plus four okay yeah yeah you would be able to answer that right you'd be like uh answer it pretty quickly in fact right and that's because you use that kind of basic arithmetic in your day-to-day -day. like often enough at least right yeah that yeah. it's important to, to kind of just have it and that's that's why that math sticks where if you start to learn uh geometry it might not stick hold on one second Right. so anyway hey, did you uh, say four plus four before yeah uh, eight sorry i thought you said two plus four <laughs> i uh ignored i thought you were making jokes anyway, <laughs> no, that's, i said it wrong <laughs> i got it wrong <laughs> but it doesn't matter uh the point is still being made you know like um yeah, it's it's there. Like it's it's somewhat in my brain now. I'm like, oh yeah, I I know this. Yeah, and so uh, for me, it's it's always um, kind of the the thing that I focus on is what will actually stay in my mind, not just the, not doing it for the sake of doing it. For instance, I used to do that with anatomy. I would just study anatomy for the sake of anatomy. Because all my instructors and all my friends and everybody would tell me that you have to study anatomy. <laughs> so I would go to life drawing and do all that fancy stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it didn't stick um, until one day I had to like face the reality that I didn't really know my anatomy. My, uh, one of my favorite art, concept artists told me that I needed to work on my anatomy. And I was like, I mean, if this guy is telling me, like, there must be something to this. It must not just be like the go-to advice, you know? And yeah. people tend to not like want to hear this advice too. It seems like, like, yeah, you got to work on your anatomy. <laughs> As if there's something better. Like, there's more advice. It's like, that is the advice. I didn't, I didn't realize that until obviously studying anatomy to the point where I was like, holy shit. Like, it's always been this. I don't know why I was avoiding it so, so regular, rigorously, rigorous, rigor, rigorously. Jesus, got too much water in my mouth. 
you know? But yeah, no, you're right, because um, it, it's always that thing. Like, um, I think it was, yeah, near the end of last year, I started getting into figure drawing, like I discovered, uh, yeah, discovered, I mean, uh, Steve Houston, I got his book, yeah. and looking through that and being like, oh, yeah, there's ways that you can uh, do gesture and, you know, poses the the uh, pencil doesn't have to be, you know, like a, uh, what do you call it, a straight line, you know, you can go fairly just like a brush almost. Totally. And that's kind of my point is that like when you start to have a little bit more focus, you start to pay attention to these things a little bit easier instead of just like doing it for the sake of doing it. Mm. So I usually recommend, yeah, studying every day. Like, uh, especially when I first started, I would probably study, you know, twice or three times a day, several hours, uh, hours of the day. When I was learning programming, I was, that's all I was doing. It's just learning. Uh, I was spending tons of time understanding programming. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that would be, uh, well, of, of course, very much different to, to the painting and there are a lot more hurdles than that. No, it's actually very similar. In fact, it's even easier in some cases than painting. Oh, okay. The reason why it's easier in some cases is because you can hide behind bad programming. You can't really hide. Oh. You can't really hide behind bad art. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, because if it works, it works, right? Like if like my player is moving, but if like another coder were to look at the code, he might be like, "The fuck were you doing?" <laughs> you know, it's all over the place. But if, to the player, they, they don't want to notice, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can understand that. Like with, because uh, my friend plays guitar and he's like, oh, there's ways you can play this note properly, but some people play it wrong and it sounds the same. So, oh, I wouldn't know that. Yeah, same, same philosophy. Actually, uh, I think that's true because I remember, like I would play concerts and I would like make a huge mistake. And, um, <clears throat> yeah like only i would know like nobody else would know not even my other bandmate mates other maybe other than the other guitarist you'd yeah. be able to hear that like i played a little bit out of tune but or like i played a melody off beat or off the, the way that we practiced it but like only he knows because we practice in a very specific way so it's supposed to sound a very specific way so he would catch it easier than let's say your your average yeah, than most uh, other people that don't really do that, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, but cheers, because um, with, with the, the same thing, uh, like the with the studying and that, I just wanted to ask, because I feel like I've been studying the wrong thing for most of the couple of months. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah, you'll you'll see. It's not easy either. You just gotta like uh, practice it, practice practicing. <laughs> no worries. Priming yourself is a good strategy too, by the way. I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I got an egg timer. All right, cool. Any other questions? Gonna move on. Um, I have one or a few actually. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Um, so the first one is that I'm heading to something called Play NYC tomorrow for um for networking. Oh, and, sweet. Yeah, I just wanted to know if like if I should go and start showing off my current portfolio or if I should just go and try to like just get to know indie devs and all the devs that are there. Cuz that's what I usually go for. You should always show your portfolio if you can. Uh you don't shove it into people's faces, but you definitely try to like get people to to give you feedback. Cuz I I can give you really good feedback obviously from my perspective and it's it's going to be helpful, but uh, having other people talk to you and give you feedback is also helpful in different ways. Um, I don't have all the answers to, and it also, you know, you want to like get in the habit of finding out why people don't like your work or why they like your work, you know? Okay. And because like I mentioned before, like you can't improve uh, if you don't know what's wrong or you don't have ideas of what could be improved. Right. And a good way to do it is sometimes having people tell you now, uh, a couple things to keep in mind. One thing is that I tend to not worry about um, feedback that's like tells me that I don't have enough of something in my portfolio. 
mm-hmm. um, like the contents type thing. Uh, because, you know, uh, I remember when I was trying to start out, I wanted to be a concept artist and people were like, well, you should do more 3D. It's easier to get a job. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but, you know, I don't really want to do 3D. I want to be a concept artist. Like, and they're like, well, yeah, it's very hard though. Like the concept is very competitive and all this stuff. And I said, yeah, yeah, I get that. Just to get something that's competitive and something that's very hard, it doesn't, it's not a good reason not to pursue it. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it just like, you're just telling me truth and that's okay. But like how some people get there, right? There are some people that overcome these problems, you know, uh, why am I not allowed to be part of this club? You know, that's the way I thought about it. And the reality is I, I am allowed. It's total bullshit that it's, too competitive and all this crazy stuff you know like there was this person that um uh felt like they had no chance and they're thinking about giving up on this whole 3d stuff too and i I reached out to them and talked to them and and like they don't go to conventions they don't talk to people they just uh, like raw apply to people and i'm like that's like the worst strategy uh out of all the strategies it's not that it's impossible to get jobs doing that i know people who do right who just raw apply to a company i'm just saying it's the worst strategy it's like not the most reliable you know these people get like hundreds of emails a day sometimes you know you're just one of many you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um but what you're doing is a better strategy which is going to talk to people you know firsthand experience with actual individuals you know what i mean Mm -hmm. that's that's the way to go about it i mean uh, Mike's going to Lightbox. He's going to be hanging out, helping us out there. And he's going to experience what I, because I always explain this to him. Uh, but he's going to experience firsthand what that looks like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. And I, by that time, the class will be over for you guys. But at least you could check in in the Skype chat and tell you all about it if he remind, if it remembers. If any of you guys go, that'd be great too. You can share that experience. But uh one time there was a student of mine that was in my class uh and we were taking a break off we were taking a week off uh that week in class and he was in my class and uh he was actually going to the same event i was going to with jesus gdc and he went and uh we hung out and he went to all the parties i went to and he went to all the events that i went to you know and uh so we showed up next class right because the following week and he was basically like, he was telling people like, no, nah, like AJ's right. Like, cause he saw me do it, right? He saw me like making new friends, making connections, <laughs> getting potentially new jobs, you know? Mm-hmm. And he was saying how crazy, like how simple it is. Like AJ would just straight up, just talk to people and just like make friends with them and almost instantaneously. And, um, and he even mentioned how, like, because he was at a, a dinner that we went to because my buddy invited me to go to critique some students. And then uh, I told him, yeah, I just sit down. And then he sat down and he's like, wait, I'm not a pro, you know? Mm-hmm. And he was giving critiques to these these kids, you know? Wow. And he was just, like, shocked, like, how simple, you know, it, it wasn't, like, this thing where it's, like, this exclusive club. And don't get me wrong, there are exclusive clubs. But the philosophy i've always had is like don't try to get a job try to make friends and if you approach it that way then it feels way less intimidating to talk to somebody right because then when you talk to somebody and you're not doing it out of like fear of like oh if if i say something wrong then i won't get a job opportunity you're doing it as like oh this is just who i am you know this is the kind of and, and if you have that kind of personality type that's really standoffish and you're really the kind of like a contrarian or a nihilist, then I would say dial that back or just stick to the freelance life, you know, mm-hmm. because, because people don't like that, man. Like I, I personally hate that, you know, mm-hmm. I, I really hate people who complain all the time. And I used to, to complain all the time in 2007 for a lot of good reasons, man. I honestly believe, <laughs> you know, but it was really affecting my life negatively. I was like the most unproductive that year. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. <clears throat> and, and even to this day, like I have things I'm very upset about and I just post uh, periodically, not often like I did like every day because it's just a waste of my energy, you know? 
right. and it starts to dictate your personality type even you start getting more snappier you start thinking everything's fucking conspiracy it's like it's not <laughs> the, it's not the best and uh i i personally do not like that my best friend uh kaylin chalk he was like this and uh there was a time where i really 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 disliked hanging out with this guy uh, when we first met, like, I really did not like, like, I actually genuinely did not like hanging out with him. Because every time we would hang out, all he would do is just talk shit. He'd just complain about this, complain about, like, he was just really just kind of a a whiner, you know? Mm-hmm. And I hated to hang around people like this. Because, uh, again, I think there are some real reasons to be upset about stuff, but about everything it's like the whole boy who cried wolf kind of syndrome you know what i mean like at some point it's like well okay at this point you're just a complainer you know like everything isn't that crazy you know mm-hmm. and then one day uh, he just changed i think what happened he tells talks about the story he talks about how when a lot of me and my, or a lot of his classmates including myself and some of our friends we got a tour at a studio an actual game studio it was great and we got to go and talk to professionals and he thought he'd be able to go too so he went and talked to the counselor he's like, all right so like where do i have to sign up you know to get going and she's like you're not going and he was just like what he's like but like all my friends are going you know like he thought like it was just kind of a free pass mm-hmm. he thought like we just like signed up to something and then we just got but he didn't realize we were all invited right and she's like no they were invited like they're the best of their class you know right and like these these people deserve to go. Like they need to get their portfolio. You you uh, by no means by no metric deserve to go. You know all you do is play Street Fighter all the time. All you do is like dick around. You don't you don't do good work. You know. Right. Like yeah, maybe you get good grades, but like that's not uh, that's not the point. Like your work is not good. And that hit him hard. You know. Mm-hmm. Because he knew deep down that she was right you know mm-hmm. and it was like the first time he had to face it and then he he faced it and he was really upset about it he was really kind of down he kind of kept to himself like he was different he talked about like when we all came afterwards and we're just like oh dude it was amazing that we got to see the games and like the, the models before they were made because i was like real fresh and none of this was new to me or all this was new to me you know Mm-hmm. and so it was super cool it was, it was exciting and we were all super excited about it and we were all great like inspired by it and he was just like super jealous and super like insecure you know mm-hmm. uh but then he took that and he said like what the fuck am i doing yeah like i need to like get good like what's going on here you know mm-hmm. and so then he did he started getting good he started complaining less and less you know and he just started focusing on just being a dope person, you know? And then, like, I started, I was like, oh, dude. Like, I mean, we always hung out. Like, he was always a nice guy. He just complained all the time, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then I was just, like, hanging out with him more because he was funny and he was, like, a lot more optimistic. And he just started having, a like, he, the nice guy part of it just standing out more, you know, because he wasn't arguing about stupid shit all the time. And now, like, he's one of my closest friends. Right, he works for some of the biggest companies, or he worked for like some of the largest studios and movies and projects. You know, he is now not of that nature. He's very positive kind of guy. You know, he still he still has those tendencies, like you know, <laughs> the, like a old habits die hard type of thing. You know, but like it's it's tolerable. You know, and it's not like it, like me and him will get in like arguments about stuff, but like it's it's never like it was you know where i just did not like hanging out with the guy and he's been there for me in one of my darkest times you know and it's it's like we help each other throughout our careers it's just how it's always been and that's because we're really good friends right now imagine if you never change that attitude because I, there are people that i know that don't have that kind of like vibe and i don't hang out with them you know i don't like to help them out <laughs> you know what i mean because I don't want to work with them. I don't want them to, to to be around me. Not because I don't think they're good people. I think that's fine. Like, you can be a complainer, right? I just don't want to work with you. And that, I think, is true for most people. Most people don't want to work with people like this. And so if you go out to make friends and you have a positive attitude, that does way more than anything else. Trust me. 
I think like my first jobs was because I was just such a, a charismatic character, you know? I was no good, but I was just so delightful to be around, you know, that that has um, helped me in my career. That alone, you know what I mean? Right. And so I encourage people to just have that same mentality, like go and be likable, dude, like have people like you. <clears throat> I mean, don't go out of your way to like do some crazy party tricks or some shit like that. I'm just saying like be yourself and the best version of whatever that is. And because if you, let's say you have a very, uh, you know, distinct personality and somebody just doesn't vibe with it, don't feel like you have to force that is what I'm getting at, you know? Like if someone, if you just don't get along with somebody, but they're like the art director of Ubisoft, that's that's a that's a that's a dodge, you know. You've dodged a potential shit shit show because let's say they they like you because you're just putting on a persona, right? And you get that job, right? Um, now you got to work with that person you actually might not like, <laughs> you know right. what I mean? And then they might start to not like you too as time goes on, you know. Uh, they are misled as well. You don't want to be in that position. You always want to kind of be the person you are, obviously, because uh, for pra for pragmatic reasons too, not just for uh, you know opportunity opportunities. Right? You want to be yourself because you don't want to potentially um, work for somebody you hate. And I've seen this happen. People will suck up to people just so they can work with said person, and then they call me or talk to me later and like, yeah, I hate it. What am I doing here? <clears throat> so go to this event, show your portfolio, make friends. Yeah. Like if people can okay. give feedback, great. If they don't, great. Just hang out with them. So how do you like, um, stay in touch with these people? Like, do you like force yourself to stay in touch with them or do you just see them again at different events? Uh, it all depends on the situation, right? Like, so for instance, if they're like a really, like it's a really positive experience, then absolutely I'll try to get their contact information, you know? Okay. Uh, by whatever, you know, like, hey, can you email me? Like, give me your, like, uh, give me your email. I'll email you right now, you know? And so that way we can keep in touch. Like, keep it organic, you know? If it's not like that, like, doesn't feel like that's a natural move, then don't do that. Okay. You know? Like, you, 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 if you have any understanding of any kind of social cues, this should be very obvious to you. Mm -hmm. you know um it shouldn't feel forced like if you're having a great conversation with somebody like that that should feel like a natural like you know what like i want to keep in touch like do you mind and okay most people will be like yeah dude, of course you know if you just like run into like somebody you're like hey man you're dope like you're great and they're like oh yeah cool man thanks and you're like cool cool hey can i get your uh, email like you know yeah, i i've definitely done that before i'm not gonna lie i've done that before. yeah so don't do that yeah. <laughs> because, <laughs> okay because like i mean are you in touch with that person still no Probably not, no. right like so obviously it wasn't meaningful anyway and so it's right. like uh like like it's it's easier to like respond like email that person that you had like such a great like conversation with Mm -hmm. you know and uh that they're just like of course and then when you email them it's even easier to be like hey remember we had like we talked about star wars for like five hours and then you're like oh yeah man it was great like good to see you he's like yeah dude just just drop in a line you know no pressure just wanted to make sure that this wasn't a dead email you know mm, okay and just like super organic and really kind of like natural uh but if it's just like you're just kind of like yeah like give me your email and they're like, what the, you know, like your opening sentence is like, give me your, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? like that's a little intense. Um, yeah. And if, even if you've been talking to them for like half an hour and you just, just feel like you're really driving the conversation, like they're not engaged, like people are like this and no fault of their own. Maybe they're fucking tired. Maybe they just want to like stop talking to people already, you know, mm -hmm. maybe they're incredibly introvert. Uh, you don't want to, you don't want to force that because then you're just going to leave a bad impression. Okay. But I mean, like, yeah. be nice to them and be like, all right, well, it was nice talking to you. And, right. you know, you can maybe if you really do want their contact, you feel like it's very valuable. You can just say, hey, do you have a, have a business card or anything that I can, you know, snag from you? They can, they can respond to that however they want. That's a little bit more professional. Right. That's what I usually ask for is the business card. Yeah. But uh, I would say direct email uh, or Instagram follow type stuff. Like that's what you want. Like where, okay. you know, people are going to respond back to you um 
because sometimes they'll give you their work email or work business card, which does not have direct correlation to them. Okay. But remember this this one point, which is make friends, don't try to get jobs. Okay. Okay. And it, it should be natural. And if you do that enough, you'll surround yourself uh, with tons of friends within the industry, like I have. Okay. Because my my biggest goal right now is to like my ultimate goal in life right now is to become like a successful freelancer, and oh, yeah. just kind of like yeah. live off of that. Yeah, you definitely need to make lots of contacts. So, and speaking of that, like, do you have any um, more, I, I watched like um, a few of your videos where you talked about freelancing and stuff, but I just wanted to know if you had any additional information about um, becoming a successful freelancer, like from where I'm at, like personally, like, I know I don't post enough on social media, but it's kind of hard to do right now with the, with the mentorship going and how intense it is. Um, but once the mentorship is over, um, what steps can I take to actually you know, become a successful freelancer, like yeah, that's, with that's a the shitty thing. job. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. It, it is to post often. I mean, it it just there is no, like, <clears throat> here here's here's the problem usually with with this kind of premise of like what is like the best strategy. You know, the best strategy is consistently this this approach of getting your stuff in front of people. No one's going to hire you if they don't know you exist, right? So the reason why you post on social network is not just like to gain fans, but also just to constantly keep yourself relevant. Like there's a direct correlation between the sales of my like tutorials and mentorships when I put myself out there more, you know? Okay. There's a direct correlation to how many job offers I get. Like for instance, I talked about how I, I get quite a bit uh but lately it's it's kind of died down a, a slightly and i think it's because i haven't been posting as often and that's because i've been working you right. know uh there's a, an exact correlation my man you know like it's not rocket scientist there's nothing or there's no rocket science to it it's nothing there's no special juice of advice that i can give you that would be better than the advice that you've just heard already from me like i don't uh I don't still sell snake oil. You know what I mean? You're taking my mentorship. The goal of this is to get you a better artist, right? Right. And that's what I'm aiming to do. And that's what we're working on. But to, to get jobs, nothing has changed as far as I can tell. You got to put your artwork out there and you got to make friends. That's ultimately it. All right. I'm sorry. You got to get really good, <laughs> right? <laughs> the better your work is and the more people you know, that's ultimately all you need to focus on. And now how, <laughs> how you go about doing any one of these things is, is different person to person. For instance, some people like to just only do social networks, right? They don't like to go to events or whatever. That mm -hmm. works, okay? That is a fine strategy too. There are people who don't want to uh, just do that. They wanna like meet people and they, they go to events all the time, right? Mm -hmm. That works as well. You know, um, and there's people who do both, right? Right. People who email a lot of people. There's people who uh, just constantly uh, apply for jobs on different job sites, you know? Right. There's all sorts of ways of going about it, but ultimately you gotta like, you gotta like be out there, you know? And okay. it's, it seems like a cheesy and very simple, like, it feels like there should be more to it, right? Because like, you're like, you feeling like I've done that. I've done like a little bit of posting. I've kind of done a couple events here and there. And it's like, it's not working out. It's the same philosophy we have with art, right? You draw a couple characters. Are you now a character designer? No, of course not, right? So mm -hmm. you gotta realize like, when I was saying that my charisma helped a lot, uh, I mean it because uh, I was also going to events like every month I actually got bailed out of a class when I was going to school. It was a math class because they had like an AI had like a stupid strict policy of like, if you miss, if you have like more than two absences, absences in your class, you flunk out. Mm -hmm. And both times that I was absent for this class. And I even told the teacher, I was like, look, man, like this is like, there's a no man is hosting a, a workshop. I need to go. Like they're going to have some of the biggest and baddest artists there. 
I need to like hear these people talk, you know? Mm -hmm. And she was just so stupid. And she was just like, well, I mean, rules are rules. If you don't, if you're not here, I'm going to mark you absent. And I was like, yeah, okay. But like, if I'm doing okay in the tests, which I was, I was nailing the tests, right? I had like, mm -hmm. all my tests. I was like, and I'm turning into my homework. Like, shouldn't that matter more than my attendance? You know, I was trying to like reason with this, this chick. And she just was like, no, nope, you got to be here. And I was like, well, I'm not going to be here, but trust me, this is good for my career. I'm not like flaking on you, I'm turning in my homework and doing all this stuff. You know, like I understand other people are like probably lying to you and shit. I'm not lying to you, you know? Right. Like I sent her like the website and everything. I told her she just is not in for it. And so I went anyway to the first one. And then there was like another event. Uh, I forget what it was. It might've been like a workshop or something. I went to that. You know, because again, it was like important for my career. My friends were all going to, so it's like we all need to go. Like we need to level up. And I went, and then she like flipped me, and I was like, "Wow, fine, whatever, dude." And I have no regrets because those, those, the especially the no more workshop, I learned so much from that. You know, mm -hmm. I met some of my favorite artists in person, and they gave me some of the greatest feedback I ever received. You know. Mm -hmm. And so, so like I'm saying, like I went to events all the time. You know what I mean? Uh, when okay. before they had like YouTube and Facebook and all these like platforms, I was using uh, blogs. You know, Blogspot back when that was popular. You know, and like DeviantArt to like share my artwork. Right, I found ways to like kind of get out there. It's only gotten easier with like stuff like Facebook and and uh art station now even you know right and so it's like the the point i'm trying to make the moral of the story is that that has been true even when i first started out in this career right mm -hmm. it's still true to to this day okay <clears throat> yeah i mean it's it's a it's a it's an investment and you, you, you get in this habit of like, okay, well, I'm in this class with AJ and I don't want to post until I have stuff like, well, no, just post anyway. Because maybe it makes like a, a, a Tumblr or like some sort of blog site where you can just post your sketches, maybe an Instagram. And you just post every day and see how it works. You might be shocked. Okay. And I was actually going to ask, you know, as someone who can't draw finished pieces every day, you know, how should I approach? Well, that's, that's what I'm getting at. I, right. I couldn't either. And I still did it. I built a habit of like not giving a fuck. And I think a lot of my peers, even people that can do a finished painting in a day, don't post every day. You know what I mean? Like I am like amongst a few people who do this. And it's not that I, there, there is not enough of us who can do extraordinary paintings quickly, right? There's quite a few of us. It's just I'm amongst the few who actually do it, right? Okay. And I feel like a lot of my popularity is principally just from that. Like, I mean, it does, it does help that my work isn't awful either, right? But mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I am very, I very strongly believe a lot of my popularity is because of just persistence. Okay, then I'll start posting some of this stuff then. Yeah, I mean, even my friend, he uh, is not an artist, but he was posting a lot. And he was telling me he was getting like, like five or six followers every other day. And I was like, yeah, man, that's how it starts. And he was like shocked. And he's like, it was getting large for his crappy drawings, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. getting in the hundreds. And he was like, like shocked. Couldn't believe it. Cause he thought he would get nobody, not even like one or two followers, like a month or something, but he was getting like a couple because he was just posting every day. People were like enjoying watching his journey. Right. Okay. And then obviously you want to leave like your art station stuff for like more like polished pieces. Well, I, I even say you should go there too. Like, and just go okay. There. But I understand also like it might make sense to make that your website slash portfolio. So it's up to you. Okay. I personally, if I had the choice, I probably would not do it. You know, now with some hindsight, like I probably would just keep it to more refined imagery. Mm hmm like I sketch, it still looks refined. I understand there's a difference, you know? Mm -hmm. But like, if I was at your guys' level, yeah, maybe wait until I have something I feel like is finished. And and that's really important to understand because when I say finished for you, I don't mean like the best possible work in the world. It might not still compete against some of the best out there. 
I mean, just something that's your portfolio, something you can sh share to other people. And mm. you say, this is the best of me. Give me feedback on this. You know what I mean? That, right. that's, that's what it should be its purpose for. Or maybe like your Instagram is just like where you're dicking around. You're not really looking for feedback. You're just trying to get in the habit of posting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, okay. Because eventually it'll start getting good. And it, it, it'll be really cool to see too, where you can like start separating it into folders, like old work. Mm -hmm. work and then maybe you you yourself will teach a class and you'll you yourself will be like let's go back and look at my old work you know and you show like this progress that's pretty cool i wish i could have some of that i found my old hard drive that i had when i was in school when i was cleaning out my garage the other day mm -hmm. so i'm gonna probably find some time to go through that and see if i can find some really old stuff that'd be cool okay and i had one last concern i sorry i'm like hogging up all the questions and stuff i just wasn't uh, available for the last one yeah it's all good um, so I'm working with a dev right now, um, who recently left his job at EA, but I have very little faith in this game currently. Like it started like high. I was like, yeah, let's do it. And then me being an indie dev myself with a, a game design degree, seeing the way he's kind of like, seeing how far we are this far in, it's like, there's not enough for me to kind of like have faith in anymore. So I don't know what to like kind of do in the situation. He was actually the one that helped me kind of pay for the mentorship, <laughs> but it was since I'm working on it for free because I wanted the connection. I also felt that like, I'm not really like tied down because he helped me pay for it. Mainly I'm mainly tied down just because I want to be a nice person. So I'm not sure if this is like something I should continue doing. If I don't really feel confident in it anymore. Um, so I just wanted to get your opinion on, on a situation like that. Yeah. You just gotta be honest. Yeah. And just try to be professional as possible. Um, I, I personally <laughs> suggest never working for free with people you don't really know. Well, even with your friend. <laughs> so you don't think the connection is worth it? No, not really. I have, um, I have never really gained much from working for free outside of like doing stuff like workshops, right? But that's mm -hmm. different. The, it's an immediate payoff. It's not like a long ass project, right? Like it's like, um, so for instance, I'm going to be on a Buzzfeed. I'm going to be doing like a thing for like one of their drawing channels. Mm hmm so that's gonna be cool and they're paying me for that still you know but right. I, would, I would normally even just do that for free because i i understand that it's going to put me in front of a lot of people and that's really nice you know mm -hmm. and it's not like uh i'm spending exuberant amounts of my time either you know that's the biggest reason why i don't mind doing it. Uh, but like teaching people abroad like people will fly me out i say you don't have to pay for me you can you can essentially just fly me out i'll do it for free i don't mm -hmm. mind doing this type of stuff for free but if it's like hey let's work on this indie game and it's gonna take like a year then uh no not at all right. never never get in that situation uh, i'm working on indie game type stuff with my friends but that's different and we have no pressure of doing it quickly we're just taking our sweet ass time mm -hmm. you know? and that's just kind of the approach that we're we're doing but it's like if I say, you know what, guys, I'm tired. I don't want to do this anymore. You know, they're not going to be upset. They're just going to be like, all right, I guess we got to stop, you know? Okay. Um, so you just got to, like, be honest with this guy and tell him, like, you lost inspiration on the project. But I will say that that's also kind of the, the – that is also kind of, like, the main reason why a lot of indies don't make their projects because they're constantly losing – interest in their own projects this is not even just true for maybe this guy's project this is true even on mainstream triple a games this happens mm -hmm. it's like the same problem i see with painters like they'll start to like not want to paint the finished painting anymore they'll just kind of be over it and i'm like no you got to do it it doesn't matter if you're bored you know right. so so you might also want to question whether that is warrants merit like that there's merit to it of your like feeling of like bouncing out or it's one of those things where it's kind of like onto better pastures type of thing because that that habit is a bad habit to to maintain as well 
And that's a personal thing that you would have to talk to yourself about. Okay. But okay. That, is, that, is, that is incredibly important to recognize whether you're doing it because it's legitimately a stupid idea and you feel like this guy's dumb or <laughs> whatever. Right. Or you're just kind of not inspired by it, you know, because mm-hmm. that's, that's something different. Cause then, then you are, you are not disciplined. You understand? And that is worse than, right. the, than thinking that the project's uninspired. Okay. Right. right. Because then you might fall into this trap of thinking everybody else doesn't know what they're doing. But at some point it's like the way I feel about like, you know, uh, the songwriter Taylor Swift, at least in the past where she kept on talking, making songs about all these guys that she keeps breaking up with. Mm-hmm. Right. At some point it's like, not every guy you run into is the problem, you know, right. like you might have to kind of take a step back and ask yourself, maybe you're the problem, you know? Right. And so it's, it's, it's the same kind of philosophy I have with this is like, is it truly the game or is it maybe your lack of interest because you just, it's been a while and, it's not moving is because that is game development regardless mm-hmm. right like i'm sure you've experienced this even on a small scale with your own projects mm-hmm. you know so like just keep that in mind but i don't know all this, i don't know all the uh the information all i can say is always be professional always try to give the person the benefit benefit of the doubt uh maybe come in with some sort of automatum like hey look man like i don't want to leave you high and dry but i also you have to understand like i'm doing project for free you know and i need to feel like there's a little bit more ownership you know what i mean so mm-hmm. that if it becomes a big deal like at least i can feel like i really worked on it you know and it's right. like, <clears throat> otherwise um yeah you can definitely just roll out and just be like you know what? i'm not i'm not into this but like okay. i said have that self-reflection it's really important because you don't make right. a mistake of like thinking that it was on the other party like the third party but then actually it was probably more you. Right. I think it's more so that like a lot of the stuff that I'm like doing is be- because it's an indie game. Um, a lot of it is like not completely involving characters. Like some of it is um, like right now I'm designing like a lot of the monsters for the game. Um, and I don't really have as much fun designing like creatures as I do characters like humans and uh, humanoids. Um, so I think it's, a big part of that and then before i started designing the the monsters i was designing a lot of the um, environment stuff which is something i completely don't want to do (laughs) yeah Um, but i I forced myself through it because i wanted the connection yeah so so that's that's a fascinating point and so i'm telling you then you might want to just bone out because you're not getting paid at all for any of this stuff right yeah, the, the connection stuff is not important um, as much as it is to be happy with what you're doing. Remember, even when I said when you go to these events, you got to make friends, uh-huh. <clears throat> right? And you don't want to work on things that you don't like either. So that's what making your portfolio cater to what you actually like versus what uh, you think people need. Right. It could be a little bit of both, but more more in your camp of like what you like. Like I, this is the kind of stuff I like to paint right here, right? Right. And two jobs I'm, I'm currently working on want me to paint stuff like this. You know? And right. it's like, dope. Okay. You know I mean? <laughs> like, I'm working yeah. with, uh, I'm working with uh, Riot Games, too. And, like, uh, I'm doing environments for them. I'm doing, like, digital map paintings. You know okay. I mean? Like, I don't do that shit. But okay. I actually do not mind because, like, uh, I am a uh, part of the project quite a bit. Um, but also like, um, you know, they're paying me. It's a job. Right. So like you can't like work at McDonald's and be like, you know what? I'm going to start making salads and yogurts. And they're like, what? No, I want a cheeseburger. You're like, no, no, no. You're getting salads and yogurts. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, you're getting paid to make whatever the customer wants. And if you don't like that, like for instance, if you don't like working at McDonald's, then you need to start making steps to to better your life or switch your career a bit. Right. I don't think it's as simple as just quit. I understand it's hard for most people to just quit, but you have to start making steps to to change that in your in your life. Okay. So I guess I'll, I'll really think about the things that I want to say and maybe have like a some kind of heart to heart talk with him or something. 
yeah just be pro super pro about it like i said like as pro as you possibly can so that way you don't come off like ungrateful and rude for whatever experience and help that he may have given you already you know right because he's like oh yeah we're gonna get we're gonna get money don't worry this project's gonna be great and i'm looking at it so far and i'm like i don't know <laughs> you you never know yeah but i mean the, this this guy that said the the exact same thing before the, this project that i was working on it was for uh he made a kickstarter he was like yeah man this project's gonna be great it's gonna it's gonna kickstarter it's gonna go off it's gonna be dope kickstarter didn't even make it like a quarter of the way so i was like yeah no yeah no, i so, got it but i appreciate you answering all my questions and concerns and stuff no that's cool dude hopefully uh others got a little bit of insight out of that too oh man it's super dark um all right i'm gonna take one last question i'm gonna roll out guys one last question for me on my main monitor it's super super uh dark or bright i need to like learn how to fix this oh uh, if no one's gonna ask a question i'll ask a last one just give a second okay <laughs> okay stefan has a question yeah, okay there we go <laughs> give it even a second man Damn, take it easy yeah stefan go ahead I want to hear you. I can't hear you. I'm like adjusting hey. monitor settings right now, seeing if I can fix this. What's up, buddy? Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. How can I uh, go about uh, practicing uh, shapes for sci-fi or? Oh, okay. Cool-looking shapes. Yeah. So look at images um, that have, you know. Um, the kind of shapes that you're really into and then just try to like draw from those shapes uh, like actually like try to like match that shape exactly like the way that you see it and then compare the actual shape like trace over the image right yeah. <laughs> <coughs> like trace over the image and see how off or on you were you know what I mean and and do that often like i did i did it quite a bit when i first started out i don't think i'll be able to fix this adjustment it's just gonna have to look like this let me let me do something real quick sorry testing stuff out i'll show you what's up i don't know what oh, that, that's pretty close that's closer Oh, I turned off my screen. Son of a bitch. Okay, hold on. All right, yeah, okay, we're good here. Let me, um, yeah, this is closer for sure. It's still super dark on my other monitor, which I found is more accurate to every other screen that exists in the world. Um, so like for instance like if you're trying to like understand the shapes of what i've drawn here right you would like try to draw like maybe the shoulder or whatever you'd be like okay aj's kind of done this and like that and it's like this and it's like that right and then you can just take this and then see how close you've gotten to that which i'm gonna probably get pretty close because it's my own fucking drawing right um but when you do this with other people you get you get better at it uh, also, like, look at line art type drawings and see how those lines and shapes are, you know? Um, and then try to, like, see the perspective of that shape. So, like, let's say you, you draw a shape from, like, a cool car grill or something. Then, like, try to see if you can see the perspective of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. <clears throat> um, but it's, like, that's how you practice shape. You just actually practice shape. <laughs> you know uh, and and another thing to practice like practice shape without um like just to actually practice good designs and shape you just fill up like a composition and then you just try to see if you can 
make an interesting image. You know? Like using just pure shapes. Yeah, just patterns. Yeah. But also kind of make it feel like it actually has some sort of story being told. Maybe there's like a character here. All right? Yeah, thanks. Um, but yeah, it, it is a matter of like also just looking at a lot of really great reference and imagery from really good artists, you know? Can I just uh, address a really quick question? Like really, really short one. It better be so quick. It's gonna be the quickest ever. Yeah, you've never heard a quicker, uh, you know, quicker question, whatever. Anyway, so this is for everyone, uh, actually. Um, I'm trying to look for some reference for something specific, and I, I don't know what to type in. So I'm actually looking for a pose of a person inside a car at the wheel with, with the arm hanging on the uh, lowered uh, window kind of thing you know like, can you take a picture of yourself is that possible uh i wish i could but no i mean i might be able to get some friends in a few days uh, <laughs> you just someone who some, has a car buy some friends uh, but i wanted to really start working on a piece like now and um i don't know how to like i don't know what to type in to, to find that kind of reference yeah if you're looking for a very specific reference that uses real objects there's two ways of going around it. Obviously, just take pictures of yourself. Yeah. Friends. Just get your friends or get like a tripod or something and use a, time, <laughs> a timed uh, picture thing. Just be creative. Yeah. I know my friend, she has this function on her phone where she waves at the camera and the camera takes a picture. Pretty yeah, cool. mine, mine can do that too, but it, it works really, like it's buggy. It's kind of buggy. Yeah, Ooh. okay. So, so my point uh, is, is that like, oh, does someone give you a suggestion? Yeah, but uh, no, actually, thanks for that. But I need it like from the outside. It's kind of that kind of a pose from the side on the outside. Ah, yeah. No worries. But my point is, is that like, um, you know, figure it out. And then like you can use 3D too if you have some 3D understanding, like DAS 3D or something. Yeah, I, I have DAS. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. But my, but my ultimate point uh, that I want to make with this is that um, I always try to tell people, don't be a problem maker, be a problem solver. Solver, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, so you have this problem and you asked a great question, right? Uh -huh. And I, you know, I gave you a solution. Um, but then the reaction was like, I don't know. You know, like you should be like, well, maybe, you know, maybe I can try this or that. Like that's, that's kind of the point I'm trying to make is like, uh, if you can't find a reference, you can't Google it, you can't, have friends take pictures of you. You can't, like, you don't like using Daz 3D. Then basically what I'll have to say to you is that it's impossible. Then. Yeah, right? I know, I know. But the, obviously it's not impossible. You know what I mean? Like, it's clearly it's not impossible. And so it's like, you just got to be creative, man. You got to really figure it out. Uh, if I were you, I would take a picture of myself, right? I would find, if I don't have friends, then I'll make a fuck, or get a mop, you know, put it up against the wall and just try over and over again until I get the right shot. You know what I mean? Like if I don't have a car, um, then I'll just like pretend that I'm in the car. I'll get like a chair, right? And then I'll go outside and take a picture of a car that's not mine in the same perspective. <laughs> and then photo you see what I'm saying? Like this is how I get yeah. it done. Yeah. I don't wait around for like a perfect answer. If there especially if there isn't one, you know what I mean? One of my favorite things to tell people, because people ask me these types of questions a lot, I'm like, how did you do this? How did you? And I always just say, Well, let me ask you, what do you think that I did? You know, like, do you think that I had a mentor that told me all this stuff? Do you think that I had YouTube to give me these videos? Like, what, what do you think AJ, Anthony Jones, did to get as good as he did? Right? Clearly, I wasn't this good always, you know? So how did I get here? And that's a great question to ask because that's the same question I used to ask about, like, people that are not even alive anymore, right? I was like, how did Sergeant get so good? You know, like, what does Sergeant do? What could he have done? You know, this is how I know like Michelangelo used to steal people's paintings and drawings so he could study. He'd go to people's houses because there was no Google. There's no like art school to go to unless you're rich, right? 
This is why he hated Leonardo da Vinci because he felt like Leonardo was an entitled, spoiled brat. <clears throat> Michelangelo is like a the grit like artist. So he did everything on his own. He would steal people's drawings so he can learn. When he was uh, older, he would go out into the mountains, build a path towards the mountains, then make a cart by himself. He'd build a cart, make a path to the mountains, take the cart up to the mountains, take an ax and a shovel and basically make a lot of gravel and basically get the stone that he needed, put it onto the cart, take it all the way back to his studio, you know, uh, mold the rock into the perfect form so you can actually sculpt from it, right? And he would do all of that like in about a week or two just to get his materials, you know what I mean? Like just to even get started where we just have to open up ZBrush and we're ready to go, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, and so it's like when I hear stuff like that, I'm like, okay, I need to be more like that, like right? Like when I was trying to learn uh, programming, like there was not one school or class that I had, I could take, I could learn every fucking thing, you know? I had to go all around. I used like several, several different apps. I used, went to several different websites. You know what I mean? Like I really was trying to find as much as I can. And the reason why I think I do so well as a teacher is because I am a consolidation of a lot of information, right? Like I have a lot of information that I myself have done the, the due diligence to put it in front of you in a much easier and digestible way, right? But ultimately you still need to go do a lot of the groundwork. You just have more of a head start than I did. Just like I had a head start against all the people who taught me a thing or two. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right? Like I don't have to go out into the mountains to get my fucking materials. Thankfully. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so so I, I'm saying to you, like I would I would personally just take pictures. If they don't exist, the reference, then I would just take pictures. I mean, I'm sure there is one though. You can probably Google it. Maybe look at comic books. Maybe comic book artists have some examples of stuff like this, you know? But it might you might not find the perfect reference, but you can at least design the perfect reference, if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 I can try. Mm -hmm. No try, do. <laughs> I, can, I can do, okay. okay yeah, fair All right, enough. I'm gonna let okay, you guys thanks. go, man. Yeah, absolutely, dude. All right, see you guys later. Have a great weekend. See you next week, friends. Cheers. Too. Cheers. See ya. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.